International. I'm very excited because I have a friend of mine here, um, Neil Edmond, and I mean, you are just like whirlwind everywhere. Uh, yeah, I just got back from Raleigh Supercon. Mm-hmm. The week before that, I was at a Kineticon in Connecticut, and now I'm here. <laughs> well, great. And there's a reason why you're doing a lot of traveling, because you uh, have a new book out. Yeah, yeah. I'm out promoting the new Power Rangers book I just wrote, which is uh, Tournament of Terror, which oh. is a uh, Pink Ranger adventure. So what they're doing right now, Random House and Penguin, uh, with Saban, who owns Power Rangers, is doing a, a new line of uh, books in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers mm-hmm. um, canon. Uh which was the original canon from 92, 93, 94, back okay. in there, um, and reintroducing all those characters in their own solo adventures. And then I think think we're going to be doing team adventure books, but I'm not sure. They haven't really told me yet. They just keep hiring me to write more, so well, I will just keep writing them. I just finished work on a Yellow Ranger book, mm-hmm. which I think comes out maybe in March. Okay. And then I'm supposed to start working on another one, I think, next week. Wow. Yeah, Power so, Rangers. All right. Well, can you tell me a little bit more about um, the Pink Power Tournament Ranger? Of Terror? Yeah, yeah. Can Tournament you tell of me Terror more? is uh, it's it's the original Pink Ranger, Kimberly Hart, um, mm-hmm. and uh, the other Rangers are gone off on another mission, and she had to stay behind for a reason, which is revealed in the story, of course. Um, okay. And then Rita Repulsa, the evil space witch up on the moon, mm-hmm. like, "Ooh, this is our chance to finally get Kimberly, <laughs> get rid of that meddlesome Pink Ranger," you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then she sends Goldar down um, mm-hmm. to basically just uh, basically just make her think she's going crazy. Mm-hmm. He, and uh, <laughs> he starts basically stalking her almost, you know, and, and mm-hmm. trying to make her think she's going crazy. I really wrote it kind of like an old classic monster movie because they're like, mm-hmm. we have this teenage girl and this metal like monster. Like, mm-hmm. And there's going to be them and only them. And I'm like, how do I do that? So I sort of pitched yeah. this like old sort of classic monster movie. I wasn't sure if they'd go for it. And then they just they mm-hmm. loved it. And... I wrote the draft, and I still wasn't sure after they had approved the outline, and then uh, they ended up loving it. And oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, so um, it's just a really, it's a lot of fun. It's just mm-hmm. an action-packed adventure, and it's Kimberly, the Pink Ranger, which who doesn't love right. Kimberly ever? It's everybody's favorite, you know, boyhood crush, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what movie specifically kind of inspired you for this story? Um... Was there one in particular? Maybe. I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to say it was like stuff like Nightmare on Elm Street or something, but maybe kind of <laughs> like those old, like, creepy, like, monster stalking the teenage mm-hmm. girl <laughs> movies, you know, but maybe even further black into, like, old classic, you know, like Creature okay. from the Black Lagoon or something, oh, you know, kind of thing, except, mm-hmm. you know, Goldar doesn't have a crush on Kimberly. You right. know, he's just trying to make her go crazy so they can finally get rid of her and destroy those <laughs> meddlesome rangers, you know, you know, Power Rangers. So. <laughs> well, they're... Powerful, and they especially are. when we have a new movie out that came yeah, out earlier this was, year. The movie was, yeah, so it was a totally like it was kind of a reboot, but it was kind mm-hmm. of its own separate thing from the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So it's those core original characters, but mm-hmm. it's a little different. Um, okay. Some people uh, didn't dig it too much. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I went and saw it, and I thought it was a good time. So oh, I mean, great. it's just Power Rangers. You know, it's giant robots and. Mm-hmm guys with you know people fighting martial arts and karate i mean what what, what's not to love so it sounds everything i loved when i was like eight years old you know Mm -hmm. so so did you did you um have any challenges with working with this ip did you feel like you just had it nailed right from the beginning yeah uh, i really did actually yeah um yeah power rangers is like it's got kind of i'm a fan of it like Mm -hmm. really love it so i mean i was nervous about it because Mm -hmm. like really like the p- people from Penguin just reached out to me uh, originally and they actually had tapped me to write something else for them mm-hmm. and we were actually going through the process of outlining that and then I got an email one day that was like so yeah you're doing really great on that um, but maybe your writing's a little older than we need for that kind of project and like mm-hmm. uh, I'm like I'm reading this email going am I getting fired I was like all oh, nervous no. like the first paragraph and the second paragraph's like however mm-hmm. we just got the license for Power Rangers and we think you'd be awesome for that do you want oh, to do that great. and it was like yes of course I do mm-hmm. and uh, yeah it was, it was just it's perfect because I you know I used to be involved in Power Rangers back in the 90s well you you acted on some of yeah, the shows right? was a, um, yeah I was a putty patroller and a bunch of different <laughs> monsters on the uh, original series and the Mighty Morphin in the 90s so which mm-hmm. is something I hadn't really talked about in a long time but now that it's coming back it was pretty funny actually they didn't the, the people that uh, Penguin didn't know 
So oh, they didn't. They know did that it. It was a complete show? happenstance. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, they didn't realize it. Um, so when we were talking originally, they're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, well, do you do you know Power Rangers very well?" Oh, and I'm wow. like, I'm "Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was it was on the show." And they're like, "Really?" And there was this like sort of pause, and it was like, uh, "Let's call you back." And then we're like, "Okay, this is really cool." So mm-hmm. everybody got really excited about that idea. But I mean. Even if I hadn't been involved in the show, I mean, I, I always loved it, you know, mm-hmm. and it was just something, you know, I, I totally know that world really well, and then yeah. everything else you can just research, and, you know, on Wikia, Power Rangers Wikia, mm-hmm. very useful. Yeah. <laughs> those guys oh, who definitely. do those Wikia pages are very, very, like, concise, you know, <laughs> so I, I don't even know if they realize how much, like, professionals, like, in these creative areas actually refer to their pages mm-hmm. for information, but I use Wikia, Power Rangers Wikia quite a bit, so props mm-hmm. to the Power Rangers Wikia guys. Oh. Very helpful. Excellent. Well, yeah. viewers know where to go. Then. Yes, exactly. So, um, I did want to uh, ask you, it does seem that you um, tend to gravitate more towards uh, teenage stories. Is mm-hmm. What does that, um, that kind of uh, age... Uh, I mean, kind of attract for you as a writer. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I think it's this guy who never really grew up very much. You know, <laughs> like I've been writing comics and I did some. You know, I've worked in animation a little bit and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I go now to Comic Con. You know, every other weekend as my job. You know, yeah. like so. It's like it's hard to think too much as a. You're, I'm in a grown up. Am I? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know. So. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, there's like my Red Riding Alpha Hunter stuff, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, which is like an action adventure, you know, mm-hmm. teenagers, you know, yeah. um, kind of thing, which is actually what uh, Penguin Random House had looked at originally mm-hmm. um, that, you know, they looked at that and thought, oh, we can handle this, you know, and we think you'd be cool for it. So mm-hmm. that's when they originally reached out to me. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that's just stuff that's near and dear to my heart, you know, mm-hmm. and I just love it. So, yeah. And I. I think I still have some ability to relate into the teenage <laughs> mindset, you know, a little bit maybe. Right. So I think you do. Apparently, my editors think so, and that's what's that's most what's important. important. Yes, yep. so. that and your readers. Yes, of course. So. But um, I do want to touch on a little bit about the Red Riding yes. uh, series because um, that's what I originally right. uh, became introduced to you right. through that series. Could and you, I think you've just recently had a second book come out. Right. Well, the first one. Uh, uh, the Red Riding Rise of the Alpha Huntress, which uh, you guys actually gave me the very first review ever on that <laughs> of anybody. Yeah, you guys were the first, so thank you for that because you know that was mm-hmm. actually really helpful to like sort of getting me out of the gate on that, you know, Excellent. and getting other. Well, yeah, because you you know somebody pays attention to you, and then somebody mm-hmm. else will pay attention to you, you know, and then it exponentially grows from there, you know. So you guys were very helpful, and thank you. But um, and then yeah, this year I put out the uh, the sequel to that, mm-hmm. Fate of the Big Bad Wolf. So Excellent. and I'm working on the third one. Um, I was kind. Kind of chugging along on it, and then you mm-hmm. know, uh, Random House hired me, to, uh, Penguin hired me to write their Power Rangers books, and mm-hmm. so I've been a little busy on that. So, mm-hmm. um, and I, I gather I'm going to be writing a lot of those for them. So, because um, they just keep they keep telling me they, they want me to do more. So, mm-hmm. um, which is awesome. You know, it's great to get hired the first time, and it's like, yay, I got that big mm-hmm. one. But to me, it was like the real win was like when they invited me back to work again. Oh, you know, that, that means cool. like that means you did a good job at least well enough to get hired again. So. Um, yeah. So, uh, just to kind of, uh, could you give us a, a quick little synopsis about the Red Riding series for, uh, for our listeners? Yeah, Red Riding, it's like an action-adventure version, like retelling of the classic Red Riding story. It's like, mm-hmm. it sort of starts out with Red, you know, she's speeding on her motorcycle, you know, mm-hmm. uh, heading down through the, the forest paths. She, she doesn't really know much about who she is and where she came from, and she's mm-hmm. on her way to her grandma's house, you know. Um, to try to find okay. out who she is and where she's from and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then she, when she gets there, she discovers she has these werewolf superpowers, basically. And she has to rise up and become, like, the alpha huntress and, like, <laughs> save the town from all sorts of terrible evil and stuff. And in the first book, she somewhat succeeds. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, it carries over because we love a series. And it Definitely. just continues on from there. So, um, and so, like, all the repercussions of the first book, mm-hmm. you know, all the things we thought, yeah, we, we accomplished those things. It's like, well, yeah, there's always repercussions, you know. Mm-hmm. And then all those characters, you know, like, everything that happens. So, like, nemesis is, you know, become friends and friends become enemies, you know, all sorts of stuff. But they've been really fun. People have been really liking them. Everybody who's read the second book keeps pushing me to write the third one. Yes. Which is also what happened with the first one. So that's a good sign. I, I was one of those. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. So I really would like to get to it. So um, there's so much time. So, I mean, oh, yeah. especially traveling to, I don't know, 12 
12 or 13 cons this year, I think. Oh, gosh. It's, yeah, and, mm-hmm. that's, and those are all in different states. So, I mean, that's lots of airplanes, lots of hotels. But, I mean, I'm not complaining, but, wow, it it's kind of gets exhausting. Mm-hmm. You're like, you know, when you wake up and you're like, what town am I in? That's where you know you've been traveling <laughs> a lot. You actually have to look out the window and be like, oh, right, okay, I'm in Tampa, you know? Yeah. So that happened to me last year, actually. Yeah. So, so you did... You did allude to the fact that you've got some projects uh, upcoming with the publisher. Yes. So, are you able to tell us a little bit of what we can expect from you in the uh, oh, coming, right now, coming the, months? The next book will be the Yellow Ranger novel, okay. which is the original uh, Yellow Ranger, um, mm-hmm. uh, Trini Quan. So, and then uh, there's another Ranger book after that, and I'm not supposed to really say because okay. the contract is still sort of mm-hmm. going on. And I mean, really, those are my big things right now. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was, like, sort of going down a different path, you know, of, like, mm-hmm. I was going to do my red writing books, I had another series in mind, and then, you know, Penguin Random House. Mm-hmm. Really, it was just, like, I got an email, like, out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> it was, like, I actually opened up this email, and I'm like, what is this? And I actually kind of didn't, at first, was like, mm-hmm. is this real? Because, like, a major New York publisher just sort of emails you and says, hey, we think you're cool, and we'd like you to write for us. You're like, hmm. <laughs> And I actually had to call, like, a few friends. And, you know, I'm like, do you know who this guy is? Like, mm-hmm. And as soon as I realized, you know, the whole connection of it, it was like, oh, okay. So, that's excellent. Which, if you have a minute, I, that's kind of a fun, like, story how that flipped around. Okay. okay I think because, we, we have a moment. I, yeah, I because uh, originally my red writing thing was uh, it was an animation pit, uh, project that was developing at Jim Henson Studios. Okay. Right? Uh, mm-hmm. Back in 2008 or 2009. And we went through a couple years of development. We never really got anywhere with it mm-hmm. as Hollywood things go mm-hmm. you know you go through development cycles and working and pitching and scripting and so when everything reverted back to me that's when I wrote the book and the editor uh, Rob Dallios who found me from Penguin was working at Henson at the time when I was working on the Red oh Riding Project gosh. so he had seen me because at first I didn't know how this worked and he had mm-hmm. seen me through like social media friends mm-hmm. that I had turned that into a book and then and then he, I guess he had his assistant check it out. Mm-hmm. And then that's how they reached out to me. So, oh, so that's like great. eight years later, you know, somebody that remembered me from eight years ago was like in a place and they're like, oh, hey, let's check out that guy. Well, well deserved. So, I mean, that's the most roundabout you know, way to ever <laughs> break in, which is, of course, the, the thing when people ask you, like, how do you break in? You're like, well, mm-hmm. you know, like. Um, just make, you know, do enough and make enough noise until, you know, somebody yeah. <laughs> really pays attention to you. So and then suddenly you go from indie author to published author to mm-hmm. getting hired by New York publishers and, you know, and your whole life just sort of flips really fast, you know, and then all the cons are like, hey, coming out. Well, it's well deserved now. Thank you. So for, um, for, for our viewers out there, where can they find you on social media? Uh, well... If you just Google Neo Edmund, you'll mm-hmm. find out, you know, find more about me than you'll ever need to know. <laughs> but, you know, neoedmund.com, all my, my social media things mm-hmm. are linked there. My Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram, my Snapchat, and every other form okay. of social media that exists. How many are there now? I don't even know. <laughs> so There's a lot. There's a lot. And we have to use them all because that's how people will find us and discover us and, and follow us and root for us and hopefully not yell at us. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very appreciative of your time, well, and congratulations well, again on Tournament of Terror. Yes, thank you um, so much for having me. I love, love doing <laughs> your guys' podcasts and all oh, your stuff. So you guys are oh. you guys are awesome, and you've always been so good to me. So oh, well, we're very appreciative, and I'm I'm thankful for your time, thank you. and I hope you have a wonderful con. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so this is Michelle with Fan Base Press. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please go to www.fanbasepress.com. Thank you.